Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to another Spring 23 edition of our first year podcast um, with the Peer Support Program. I'm Casey, and today I have a special guest with me, and I'm just going to give them the floor to int introduce themselves. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Aisha Wright, but I also go by Aisha Marie. I'm a junior here at Columbia College Chicago with a major in marketing and a concentration in radio. I'm currently a student worker at SDI, so I'm excited to be on the podcast finally. And Yay. thank you, Casey, for thinking of me. <laughs> thank you for coming and doing this with me. Um, so for today's episode, um, I just wanted to like have an open discussion with Aja just about um, like advocating for yourself and um, just like talking about our experiences and advice for like um, going through that. Um, because like for me personally, um, as I started to become a young adult, um, the biggest learning curve I've, I've had so far um, is just like the art of like effective communication and being able to like interpret and communicate my needs and my thoughts and my boundaries with others, especially when you're like um, working on a team of any sorts of people or just like, even with your like personal relationships. So I was just gonna ask you as a kind of like, um, what are your go-tos on how to like identify and understand like how you're feeling your boundaries and your, your thoughts? I would say just acknowledging my feelings. Um, we all feel that feeling. Um, it's like our woman intuition. So when you feel some type of way, acknowledge it. Don't really brush it under the rug or tell yourself it's not true or try to water down your feelings. No, if somebody hurts your feelings, let that person know and just be direct about it. Um, we kind of, as women, we have a hard time <laughs> differentiating, being respectful and like, also stating what's on your mind but we have to just find a balance in between it all it takes time but once you just say how you feel it will eliminate all problems before it occurred because you're just letting people know these are my boundaries um I would not take this or take that from you because I only give myself the most respect so if you give it to yourself others should also follow I love that I I relate to that so much because that's something I'm personally trying to navigate just sometimes I really try to give I try to like hide how I'm feeling or like not hide but kind of just like um not very I don't I tend to not like be present in what I'm feeling and try to like diminish mm -hmm. the value of how I feel if that makes sense so um yeah. I definitely like need to like just believe in how I feel and just state it openly. Um, yep. And I guess then the next question I, I wanted to ask you is just like, um, how do you go about like honest communication with others? Um, like just tips for like feeling confident or just like effectively communicating how you feel? I'm, I'm currently learning how to mm. do that. But I write a lot of things down. Like before I have any conversation with someone, I usually write it in my notes. I know we all do this, but <laughs> I write it in my notes first so I can get my words out correctly and speak effectively about my feelings. And because sometimes when we speak um, without writing anything down, we always think of others before ourselves. And when we're writing in our journal, we're just thinking about ourselves and we're in our thoughts. So I tried to write before and then just say how I feel. And sometimes people will take it the wrong way, but it's not really on us at that point. Like it's more of their problem. Um, You just have to release certain things. So I'm learning how to communicate effectively with different people because everybody has different communication styles. Like certain people will think that you're yelling at them when you're just using your direct voice or sometimes you have to stop using your hands when you're talking because then sometimes people will get offended. Like, oh my God, I feel like you're trying to um, put me in a space where I don't feel comfortable. So sometimes you just have to be more aware of not just your the way you're talking to people, but your body language. So that goes a long way. So I'm still learning. Maybe you have some tips for people, but I just know I write everything down first. 
No, I totally agree with you. That's something I try to like really like think about what I feel and write it down too. Um, sometimes I'll even have like conversations with myself just out loud, trying to gather my my thoughts. Um, and this isn't this kind of goes off topic, but something that I came to mind when I heard you talk was especially like how other people interpret your voice or like how you speak or how you're trying to handle a situation can sometimes um, have like negative connotations. And I feel like, especially for me, I've been recently in a situation where like, I'm very calm and like my words or like how I speak are being like misinterpreted into like negativity. And it kind of just reminds me, um, especially for like women of color, um, like the mm -hmm. microaggressions um, kind of involved in like, I don't know, people, interpreting us as being more like negative or like harsh when we're like being very calm uh, it's just mm -hmm. of that. and um that's kind of like a, a situation i've had to deal with lately um and when it comes to that i um think 100 percent of what you just said just like yeah. knowing where where you're coming from and sometimes like people aren't always going to be there to like receive what your what your message is even if you're like being as calm as possible yes um and that's just a daily struggle we deal with mm -hmm. um but we have to realize we can't put that all on ourselves it is not our problem it's their problem yes. because we're just speaking up for ourselves in a way that we know how to but i know we do have to learn to adjust um to different environments and how people receive different things so that's something that we have to stay aware of but just letting people know how you feel is okay we we were taught as women like to kind of be quiet or don't say how you mm -hmm. feel because it might affect this person and that person because to be honest our voices are powerful and people know that um, when we say certain things and make different changes a lot of things happen so we have to really stand in our power because I know for a long time I was scared of my voice like super super scared um, and people <laughs> when I tell people this story now it's like how are you scared of your voice and you're um you're host things and you get on a mic or you have a podcast and it's just easy for you to do it now. But I did everything creatively without using my voice before I got on the mic. Like I played a lot of instruments, but I still was on the stage and I loved that feeling um, until I got into theater and in high school. And I decided to like use my voice in a way where I can release different emotions. So that helped me out so much when trying to figure out how to let people know how I'm feeling. And I did it through just theater and then turned into something else. But our voices are super powerful and it's how you use it, it goes a long way. I love that so much. Um, kind of backpedaling a little bit on the idea of um, just like those tough conversations with people. Is there anything that you um, tell yourself, I guess, to feel better about like coping with, I guess, conflict with others? Mm -hmm. That's something I'm constantly thinking about. Like I'm an overthinker. So, um, <clears throat> excuse mm -hmm. me, um, after I have deep conversations with people or have like an argument or something I'm constantly thinking about what did I say wrong or trying to pick out the certain things that I said it might like affect someone else rather than just thinking about myself so I would say how I deal with it is just kind of praying about it like taking it out of my hands and putting it into God's hands because like I said what I felt at that moment and I just pray that I didn't like offend anyone um, but I know, too, I do a lot of reflection after those type of conflicts because I could be doing better or communicating in different ways because sometimes we tend to not thinking about that part. Like we usually just think about what people did to us. But what do we do? What do we do to that person? Because um, that goes a long way too. not only we're being affected, the other person is, too. So we have to acknowledge that. So I would say just praying about it helps me out. Um, and just doing ref a lot of reflection um, and just trying to figure out what happened and how can I be a better person, not only for myself, but for others as well, if I get in another conflict or have another issue with someone that I love. Yeah, it's always like growing pains and you learn from like previous 
interactions with others and it, it just makes you stronger. Um, I really resonated that personally because I've, I've been going through these kind of things a lot lately um, mm-hmm. as a musician. Um, just I've been in like a band that I've been putting together um, and there's been a lot of like issues lately and just like I personally have been trying to take steps to learning how to like go about these with like you know holding my head up high and just knowing who I am as a person and growing and learning from like um situations that I can't always control or situations that I wish had done better mm-hmm. and um I guess another thing that kind of comes up for me is just like the idea of like struggling with anxiety. Um, and I'm personally a huge people pleaser. And um, I feel like this conversation has been a lot about just dealing with, um, you know, mm-hmm. pressure to like not hurt anyone or offend anyone or to kind of be a little anti selfish in a way. And I guess what I'm trying to ask you is just. Um, if you have any, like, specific, like, experience of that that you would like to share and, like, how you, like, handled that and how you would go about giving someone else advice that's kind of, like, an issue with, like, being a people pleaser and not knowing how to Mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Well, I have anxiety, too, as well. Mm -hmm. Um, It's more like social anxiety, so... When I be around certain people that I really don't know, I tend to like get into my own, own like corner and be like, oh, I don't want to be talking to people like certain things happen like that. But I had to learn um, that it's OK to not um, not want to be around certain people or don't want to um, start any type of conflict. Um, it's good to really analyze the situation before saying anything. I know that helped me a lot with my anxiety because sometimes when you just think off just like your thoughts sometimes it doesn't really go well Um, you have to really think through it because you will always regret your actions and you look back into it so the advice that I would give to someone that might be going through that is to just just let yourself know that it's okay and give yourself grace Um, let that person know how you truly feel in the moment and if that person takes this the wrong way, it's just like it's over with. It probably means that you're not supposed to be their friend some type of way or it's a learning experience for both of you. Um, just knowing when to throw in a towel is always good. Um, you can't overextend yourself to someone that's not really reciprocating yeah. that same energy for you because then you would be burnt out. And, with, and that goes hand in hand with anxiety like you can't be the person that you want to be every day you stop doing certain things that you love to do because of that so just like throw in the towel that's my <laughs> my advice right now is just like if it doesn't feel right yes. or seem right put yourself first and throw in the towel and that's something um, that I'm yeah. learning that you, yeah you can't continue to tell people how to treat mm-hmm. you or continue to show people all the time like that's exhausting yeah. like, either they're gonna do it or they're not gonna do it um because if you that type of person that wear your heart on your sleeve and constantly thinking of others it gets very tiring when you have to mm-hmm. continue to do that for people and they don't return the favor and yeah. it's just like you're not asking them for a lot it's just like i'm reciprocating um some energy that i feel like that should be given to me and we have to just Stay in that and just trust ourselves, trust our gut, and just throw in the towel. <laughs> I feel like everything you're saying, I'm supposed to be hearing right now, this moment, all those for this podcast. But uh, I just resonate with everything you're saying. And I just thank you for taking time to like speak with me and just, I don't know, you're so motivating. So thank you for that. And I just want to know if there's any, any last things you want to say or like, um, if you want to like plug any like events or like your social media or anything, just feel free to the floor is yours. Okay. Um. Again, my name is Ija Wright. Um. I go by Ija Marie. You can follow me on Instagram at i j a dot marie m a r i e. Um. Anything else? Uh. Just make sure y'all check y'all school emails because I send Ooh. out emails from different organizations I'm a part of. 
So if you want to be in a loop on a lot of things that's going on campus, whether if it's Manifest or BSU or some SGA things, mm-hmm. just stay in a loop by just checking your school emails and just make sure you guys stop by SDI on the yeah. fourth floor and then 618 building. Thank you so much. Um, again, that was Aja, and I'm Casey. I'm a career support mentor. Thank you for listening to our conversation today. I hope you um, found it interesting and um, and you just had a good time listening. So thank you so much again. Have a good day, y'all. You're welcome. You too.